Hey everybody, welcome back to day two of our Geometry Summer Skills uh, video lessons. All right, for today, you're going to be needing your uh, packet. You're going to need the two highlighters that came with the packet and a calculator. Now, if you have not done so, before you watch the rest of this video, make sure that you log on to the Google Meet and you check in with Mrs. Farmello. Um, if for some reason she is not there or you logged on a little bit later, which make sure you're there at 10, um, you can email her at A-F-A-R-M-E-L-O, so a Farmello at amherschools.org. Make sure that you check in with her because you want to make sure that you receive credit for today. All right, today is going to be our last video lesson. All right, starting next Tuesday, these sessions will be live. All right, so I'll be able to see you. So I apologize for doing this video style, but um, it's the best that I could do. All right, so without further ado, let's take a look at today's notes. All right, so here we go. All right, so for today, we're gonna to be focusing on parallel lines and their angle relationships. Our goal for today, given a figure with parallel lines, you will be able to use angle relationships to find missing measurements in the picture. All right, so today we're taking a look at two parallel lines cut by a transversal. All right, so if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, so if we take a look at this picture, we have our two parallel lines. Now we know those lines are parallel because they never touch, they're going in the same direction. And we also noticed, you see how there's these little arrows. So whenever you have arrows on lines, that means they are parallel to each other. Now a transversal is a line that intersects both of them. So I'm gonna highlight the transversal. Now, if you look carefully at the top parallel line, there's four angles that are created when the transversal intersects with the top parallel line. Now, if we go to the bottom parallel line, again, the transversal intersects this line, and once more, there are four more angles down here. Now, because these lines are parallel, these four angles have a very special relationship to these four angles down here. And that's what we're going to be focusing on today. All right, there's actually three special and unique uh, angle relationships that are formed with those eight angles that are created. Now, the first one that we're going to be looking at are corresponding angles, which are equal in measure. Okay, so corresponding angles are angles that are in the same location, except one is on the top parallel line and the other is on the bottom parallel line. So for instance, if I were to give you angle A, angle A is gonna be equal to, now if you take a look, if I were to cut straight through the middle between the two parallel lines, and I took the top four angles and slid them down onto the bottom four angles, what angle would A be on top of down here? Well, if I slid these four angles straight down, a would now be directly on top of angle E. So angle A is equal to angle E because they are corresponding angles. All right, let's try another one. If you take C, angle C, so take these top four angles, slide them straight down, angle C would overlap or be right on top of which of these four angles here? It would be G. All right, let's try B. B is going to be equal to, so if I look, it's on top of the parallel line, and it's on the left of the transversal. So if I go down here, on top of the parallel line and on the left of the transversal, that would be F. And then the last one, let's do D, would be equal to, so if I slid these four angles down, this is below the parallel line and on the left, so it would be equal to H. So those are your four pairs of corresponding angles, which are going to be equal to each other. Okay, up next, we have alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles. So when you alternate, that means they're on opposite sides. So one's on the left, one's on the right. These are also going to be interior angles. So interior means they're going to be inside of the parallel lines. 
All right, so let's see. Now, an angle relationship means you're going to take one of the angles from the top and one of the angles from the bottom parallel line. Now, we want these to be on the inside because they are interior and alternate the transversal. So if I were to take C, C, so let's look. We need to go to the bottom set of the parallel line. So C is on the top parallel line, so we want to go to the bottom of parallel line. Again, you want to be on the interior, but on the opposite side. So since C is on the left, we're going to go to F, which is on the right. So angle C is going to be equal to F because they are alternate interior angles. So they're almost like across and up and down. All right. So there's one more pair of alternate interior angles, and that is going to be angle D is going to be equal to, so D is on the top parallel line, and it's on the right-hand side. So now we're going to go to the bottom of parallel line, and we're going to go to the left-hand side. It would be equal to E. So they alternate sides of the parallel line, and they alternate which parallel line they are touching, the top and the bottom. All right, so next one, we have to be careful. These are same side interior angles, but instead of being equal, now they're going to add to 180 degrees. So once again, they're interior, so they're going to be on the inside. All right, and they're going to be on the same side. That means the same side of the transversal. So if you look at C, C is on the top parallel line, so I'm going to go straight down. All right, so same side, so it's on the left. Stay on the left, but go to the bottom parallel line. It's going to be E. So that means C plus E is going to be equal to 180 degrees. They are your same side interior angles. All right, so we've got one more pair. So that's going to be D. So D is on the right side of the transversal. So what other angles on the interior right side? That would be F. So that means D plus F is equal to 180 degrees. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to put stars here, here, and here. These are your three new angle relationships for today. Now, in addition to these three, we also need to make sure that we remember our angle relationships that we learned on Tuesday. And those are going to be linear angles are supplementary, or we know that that means they're going to add to 180 degrees. So remember, linear angles are angles that are next to each other and form a straight line. So if we go back up to this picture, if you look at A and B together, do they form a straight line? Yep, so A and B would be linear angles. Oops, let me scooch down here. So we could write A plus B equals 180. Now we could also do A plus what other angle? A plus C, because together A and C form a straight line here. So we could do A plus C equals 180. All right, we could do, a, there's a lot of linear angles here. So we could also do F and H or F and E. We could do G and H and G and E. We could do B and D. All right, there's a lot of different relationships here. So you just have to look carefully for those linear angles. All right, the other one that we remember from Tuesday's lesson are vertical angles. So remember, vertical angles are opposite each other, and they are equal in measure. So let's write down a couple examples. So since I already have C in a box here, C is vertical to which angle? So look directly opposite. It has to be touching it and opposite, so that would be B. So that means C is equal to B because they are vertical. All right, let's come down here. How about F? F is going to be vertical to what other angle? So it has to be touching it, and opposite it, that would be G. So F is equal to G. All right, and our last angle relationship from Tuesday, angles about a point add to 360. So we could take a look up here. There are four angles that all are touching that point. These would all add to 360. And down here, these would also all add to 360. So we could write A plus B plus C plus D equals 360. Or we could write E plus F plus G plus H. Oops, H equals 360. Okay, so now we have all of those angle relationships. Let's put them together and see 
why parallel lines are so special. So what I'd like you to do is underneath this diagram over here, draw or sketch two parallel lines cut by a transversal. Now, we want these two lines to be parallel, so I'm going to go ahead and put, I like doing double arrows, so we have the parallel symbol. And now, if I were to tell you that this angle over here were 52 degrees, knowing only that one angle is 52 degrees, you can now fill in all of the other seven angles. Okay, and let's try that together. Let's see, how can we do that? Well, we know if this angle is 52, what angle is vertical from it? Well, this angle here is vertical, so we know this angle down here has to be 52 degrees. Now, we can also use the idea that we have linear angles. So if this angle is 52 and this is a straight line, can we find the angle that is adjacent or next to it? We sure can. And we can do that by taking 180 minus 52, and we get 128. Now if this angle is 128, its vertical angle here is also 128 degrees. So now we have all four of these angles filled in. Now remember, your corresponding angles are equal. That means these four angles have to match up perfectly with these four angles. So I'm gonna take these four angle measures, I'm gonna slide them straight down, and I'm gonna rewrite them so that way they look identical. So this angle 52 matches with this angle 52. 128 here matches with this angle 128. The 52 here matches with this angle 52 and 128. So ladies and gentlemen, the reason why we really practice and we look carefully at parallel lines is because they have these unique relationships where all of the angles are congruent to each other. Okay, so what we're gonna do today is we are going to practice using these angle relationships to help us find our angle measures. All right. So in the picture, we have line AB is parallel, so that symbol for parallel looks like two backslashes, that's the parallel symbol, to line B. If the given angle is 35, fill in as many other angles as you can. All right, well in this case, we should be able to fill in all of the other seven angles. So I'm going to start by using the linear angles. So we know that this is a straight parallel line. So that means these two angles have to add to 180 degrees. So I'm gonna do 180 minus 35, and I get 145. So I can put 145 into the picture. And now I know every single one of the other angles in this picture has to be either 35 or 145. So I'm going to start by filling in my vertical angles. So if this angle is 35, its vertical angle is 35. Now I'm going to fill in my alternate interior angles. So if this angle is 35, it's alternate interior. So go to the other side and slide down. This angle here is 35. And then its vertical angle would then be 35. So four of my angles are 35 degrees, which means the other four angles are going to be 145. So here we have its vertical angle, its alternate interior angle, and then its vertical angle. And just like that, we have all eight angles in our figure filled out. All right, so now let's practice finding missing angles and also naming what the relationship is. Okay, so example number two. It says, what is the measure of angle C? And then what is its relationship to the 53 degree angle with angle C? So let's look at the picture. We want to find angle C, which is right here. Okay, so the only other angle we have in the picture is that 53 degree angle. So what's the relationship with angle C and that 53 degree angle? Well, these two angles are touching each other, 
They're not opposite, so they can't be vertical, but together, does the 53 degree angle and angle C, is that a straight line? It sure is, so that means these two angles together have to add to 180 degrees because they are linear angles. So linear angles is the relationship. So I can do 180 minus 53 degrees. I'm gonna let my calculator do that for me, minus 53, and we get 127 degrees. So now I can put the 127 degrees in the figure. Okay, up next, question three. What is the measure of angle A? And then it says, what is the relationship between angle C and angle A? All right, so they want us to compare angle C and angle A. So remember, we found angle C up in question two, so I'm gonna put that measure in the picture. So this angle here is 127 degrees. So let's look carefully, what's the relationship between that 127 and angle A? So angle C and angle A, what's the relationship? Well, they're both inside of the parallel lines, so they're interior, and are they on opposite sides or the same side of the transversal? Well, they're both, this is your transversal here, they're both on the left. So these are gonna be same side interior angles. So we have to think, what's the relationship between same side interior angles? Well, they're not equal, because I can tell that by just looking at the picture. This angle here is obtuse, it's more than 90. Angle A is acute, it's less than 90, which means they're going to add to 180 degrees. So I can do 180 minus 127, and that's gonna give me the 53 degrees. All right, and then for our last question here, number four, what is the measure of angle B and what is the relationship between angle A and angle B? So they want our relationship between A and B. So angle A we found up here is 53, so I'm gonna put that in the picture. So then what's its relationship with angle B? Well, they're touching each other. They're not next to, but they're opposite each other. So that means these are gonna be vertical angles. And what do we know about vertical angles? They are congruent. So they're going to be equal in measure. So 53 degrees is going to be angle B. Now, if you wanted to, we could have just gone right away and filled in all of the angles. So 53, 53, 53, 53, and then the other angles would all be 127. So that's another way to do it. Just fill them all in and then look for the angle that you need. Okay, so now that we know what our angle relationships are, let's take a look at some figures that are just a little bit more complex. So here, we're gonna be taking a look at double transversals with parallel lines. Now, my big helpful hint, I'm gonna put some stars here. Angles only have a relationship if they are on the same transversal. Okay, so my hint, highlight each transversal in a different color. Do not highlight the parallel lines. You're highlighting the transversals. Only the angles touching the same colored transversal have a relationship to each other. Okay, so let's see how this works. Number five, fill in all 14 missing angles. Now, if we look at the figure, we have the two parallel lines. I know they're parallel because they have that extra arrow. That means we have two different transversals. So what I'd like you all to do is please take your two different highlighters. Highlight the 110 degree angle. Highlight that transversal in one color. And highlight the other transversal in a different color. Now that means only the angles touching the same transversal have a relationship. So these angles here do not match up with any of the angles. So the blue does not match with the orange, only blue matches with blue. So that means sometimes I like to put a circle around them 
everything in this circle, these angles are related, and then only in this bubble are these angles related. So they cannot cross over. Okay, so that means if this angle is 110, can we find its linear angle? Well, we sure can. We know the angle directly next to it, they're gonna add to 180. So 180 minus 110, and we get 70. So this angle here is 70. So now we can start to fill in all of our other angles. So that means its vertical angle would also be 70. The vertical angle to the 110 would be 110. And then remember, these four angles, we can slide them down the transversal and they're gonna match with these four angles down here. All right, so that means it's gonna be 70, 110, 110, and 70. So everything touching the blue transversal is going to match. So now let's take a look at the orange transversal. We have one of the angles is 53, so that means all of the other angles are gonna have a relationship to that 53 degree angle as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is find its linear angle. So 180 minus 53, and we get 127. So the angle directly next to it here would be 127. Also, the angle right next to it over here would also be 127, and its vertical angle would be 53. Now, I'm gonna take those four angles, I'm gonna slide them up the orange transversal, and they're gonna match with the four angles that are also touching that orange transversal. So 53, 127, 53, 127. So ladies and gentlemen, that's how we solve a question with a double transversal. Just take care of one transversal at a time. All right, so let's take a look at a few more examples. So example number six. Line L is parallel to line M. So I'm gonna go down to the picture. I can put my extra set of arrows there. So these are parallel lines, which means N is a transversal and P is a transversal because they are not parallel lines. If angle one is 60 degrees, so I'm gonna put a 60 degree angle there, and angle five, oops, sorry, and angle 10 is 40 degrees, we wanna find the measure of angle five, which is this angle down here, so I'm gonna circle it. We're trying to find angle five. Well, remember, we have two parallel lines and we have two transversals, so I'm gonna highlight each transversal in a different color. N and P. So now I'm gonna look carefully. What angle are we trying to find? We're trying to find angle five. Now remember, angles only have a relationship if they are on the same transversal. So angle five is touching the blue transversal, which means we are not using the orange transversal at all. We are only gonna use the blue transversal. Now look for an angle measure on the blue transversal. Here we go, we've got a 40 degree angle, which means if you have one angle, you can fill in all of the other ones. So if this angle is 40, its vertical angle is 40 degrees. We then know that we have linear angles, so 180 minus 40 is 140. So we have 140 and 140. Now I could take those four angles and slide them directly down and they should match up perfectly. So 140, 40, 40, and 140. So what do we get for the measure of angle five? All right, so angle five equals 40 degrees and we have found our solution. Okay, let's take a look at example number seven. Line L is parallel to line M. So these are your parallel lines, which means we have two transversals. So I like right away, I like to highlight them in different colors. So I'm gonna highlight in blue, highlight in orange. It says angle one is 70 degrees and angle 10 is 
50 degrees. What is the measure of angle 16? All right, so I'm going to circle angle 16. Now, angle 16 is on transversal N, which means 16 only has a relationship with the other angles on that same line N, which means 16 has no relationship with line P. So I'm gonna cross off line P and all of its angles. So now what I'd like you to do is I'm gonna give you about 20 seconds. I'd like you to, on your own, go ahead and find the measure of angle 16. All right, let's take a look. How did you do? Let's see. So if we have 70, let's fill in all the angles. Then we have 110, 110, and 70. Slide them down. 70, 110, 110, and 70. Did you get angle 16 equal to, let's see, 110 degrees? If you did, you have got it. All right, so we're going to take this one step further. Now that we understand how to do the double transversal, we are now going to combine our double transversal with a few more new angle relationships. All right, so the first new angle relationship is the interior angles of a triangle are going to add to, so let's see, the three angles of a triangle are always going to add to 180 degrees. So if we want to find the measure of angle X here, we are going to do 180 minus 75 minus 55, and let's see what we get. So 180 minus 75 minus 55, we get 50 degrees. So now all of the angles add up to 180. Now the second relationship we're going to review is the interior angles of a quadrilateral add to, well now there's four angles and they're going to add to 360 degrees. So a four-sided shape, the angles always add to 360. So to find the missing angle X, I'm going to take 360 minus 110 minus 92 minus 88 and let's see what we get. So 360 minus 110 minus 92, minus 88, and we get 70 degrees. Okay, so now we're gonna take these two angle relationships and we're gonna combine them with our parallel lines. All right, so this is the, the big part of today's lesson, complex figures with parallel lines, combining all of our angle relationships. So here are your steps. Step number one, you're gonna take a look at the picture and you're gonna extend any parallel lines and transversals. So that way you can reveal all of the angles possible. Step number two, if there are more than one transversal, highlight them in different colors. Fill in as many angles as you can, and then look for triangles or quadrilaterals that can help you find more angle measures. So looking for your shapes, that's your last step. All right, let's give this a try. So example number eight, find the measure of angle D. Oh boy, so this looks a little, a little unique. So remember, step number one, extend any parallel lines and transversals. So I see that we have arrow and arrow, so these lines are parallel, so I can extend them. And extend your transversal. All right, so now all we have are two parallel lines cut by a single transversal, which this is what we were practicing at the beginning of the lesson. So even though the picture looked complex, it turned out to be a pretty simple question. So we are just gonna use all of our angle relationships. So if this angle is 35, I know its linear angle is going to be 35 degrees. And if that angle is 35, we can find, I'm sorry, it's a vertical angle. Vertical angles are equal. We can find its linear angle now because linear angles is a straight line. 
add to 180. So 180 minus 35 is 145. Now because these lines are parallel, we know these four angles are going to match up perfectly to these four angles. So I'm going to take those four angle measures and I'm going to slide them up. And we are going to get 35, 145, 145, and 35. So that means D is equal to 145. And we have got it. All right. Up next, number nine. Find the following angle measures. Now, I'm going to give you a really big helpful hint. When you have a question that asks you for multiple angles, Usually, it's easiest to do them in the order they give them to you. Usually, it's kind of a helpful hint when they give you them in order. Okay, so let's go over here and take a look. So here's J, K, and M. Oh, boy. All right. First things first. Let's see, can we extend any of our lines? Well, this is a parallel line here, so I can make that a little bit longer. And we have a parallel line at the top, so I can make that a little bit longer. All right, now this angle right, or this line here, I can extend it above and below. So now this is a transversal. All right, so I can take that transversal and I can highlight it. Okay, now there's another line in this picture here this is another transversal, so I can extend this line out. I can extend this line here and down as well. Now that would be another transversal. So I can take that and highlight it in another color. Okay, so the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna try to fill in as many angles as we can that are going around the same transversal. So I'm gonna take a look at my orange transversal first, this one here. All right, and I see that we have an angle measure which is 92 degrees. And that's the reason why I picked this transversal first is because it has an angle that is by itself on a transversal. Whereas this angle 46 down here, it's touching the blue, but this is also kind of part of that orange transversal too, so it gets a little bit more complex. So that's why I picked the 92 first. So if this angle here is 92, it's a vertical angle here is 92. And now we can find its linear angle, so 180 minus 92, and we get 88 degrees, which means its vertical angle here is 88. Okay, now remember, if angles are touching the same transversal, you can slide them down and match them up perfectly. However, you have to be very careful because if you see here, there's a blue transversal here and here. So we cannot match up those angles there and there. However, this is orange in a parallel line. So we can take that top 92 degree angle and we can slide that down because it's not touching the blue at all. So this would be 92 degrees. And now we have found angle J. Okay, up next, we wanna find angle K. Now angle K is between the orange transversal and the blue transversal. It's not on a parallel line. So that means we cannot use corresponding alternate interior or same side interior because it's not part of a parallel line. So we have to look for another one of our angle relationships. So we have to look for vertical angles. We have to look for linear angles or angles about a point. Now, if I look carefully here, I don't have all of these angles, so I can't use angles about a point. We don't know its vertical angle. However, what we do know is this is a straight line right here. So that means these three angles, when you put them together, form a straight line. So that means they have to add to 180 degrees. So I'm gonna do 180 minus the 92 degrees from angle J minus the 46 degrees. And let's see, what do we get? 180 minus 92 minus 46. So our missing angle K is gonna be 42 degrees. 
Okay, next we have one final angle left and that is angle M. Now, remember, we can also look for our different shapes. So if I look in the middle here, what shape do we see? Do you see the triangle? Yes, and is angle M one of the angles of a triangle? Well, it sure is, so it would be M, 92 and 42. So what do we know about the three angles of a triangle? You got it. They have to add to 180. So I'm going to do 180 minus 92 minus 42. And let's see, what do we get? So 180 minus 92 minus 42. And we get 46 degrees. So angle M is 46 degrees. And we have got it. All right, I've got two final questions left for us to try today. And then you'll go to your individual practice, which is a little bit shorter today. So let's take a look. Example number 10. In the figure, line L is parallel to line M. So these lines are parallel. Find the measure of angle X. Now angle X is this angle way up here. All right, so remember, our steps for complex pictures. We're gonna to try to fill in as many angles as we can and eventually we'll make our way to angle X. Well, we have two parallel lines, but we also have these other lines that are going up and down. Remember, those are your transversals. Since there's two transversals, we're gonna highlight them in different colors. So I'm gonna do one of the transversals in orange in one of the transversals in blue. Now remember, only the angles touching the same colored transversal have a relationship with each other. So I'm gonna start over here with my orange transversal, and the angle 130 is touching that. So from this one angle, can we start filling in some other ones? We sure can. So we know that its vertical angle is gonna be equal. We also know that its linear angle, the one directly next to it, adds to 180. So 180 minus 130, we get 50 degrees. So this angle here would be 50 and 50. Now I can take those four angles, slide them up the transversal, and they have to match the other four angles on the parallel line. So I can match those up. So 130, 50, 130, and 50. So because they're both on the orange, their angles match up. Now let's go over to the second transversal, which is my blue transversal. I have one angle there that's 110, so from that angle, I'm gonna fill in all of the other angles. So its vertical angle would be 110, and then its linear angle, 180 minus 110, is 70. Now I'm gonna take those four angles, slide them up, and they should match up. So 70, 110, 70, 110. Now I have filled in many angles here. Let's see, do we have enough information now to find angle X? Well, look at angle X. Is it part of a shape? Yeah, it is. There is a triangle here in the middle at the top. So these three angles have to add to 180 because they create a triangle. So 180 minus 50 minus 70. Let's see what we get. 180 minus 50 minus 70. That top angle is going to be 60 degrees. So angle X is 60. All right. Final question, let's take a look at number 11. In the figure below, angle A is parallel to angle B. We want to find the measure of angle Y. Okay, so angle A is parallel to angle B, so right away I'm going to put those arrows, those are my parallel lines. And then if I look carefully, I have two other lines that go and intersect both of those, which means we have two transversals. So let's highlight one transversal in one color and one transversal in the other color. 
All right, now we're trying to find angle Y. And if I look at angle Y, it's here in the middle. Now there's no other angles touching it. So I don't know much about angle Y, but look carefully. Is angle Y part of a shape? Ooh, it is. So let's try to fill in as many angles as we can first, and eventually let's see if we can then find angle Y. Well, since these are parallel lines, we know that their angles are all gonna be related. So I'm gonna start here with this 55 degree angle. And let's see, if this angle's 55, that means I can fill in all of the other angles. So it's vertical angle would be 55. And then it's linear angle 180 minus 55 is gonna give us 125. All right, now this next step, be careful. So we know that if you have parallel lines, their angles match. So I'm gonna take these four angles slide them all the way down the blue until you get to the parallel line. Don't stop in the middle, go all the way down and they match up down here. So remember, only angles on parallel lines have those relationships. Now let's look at the other transversal. If this angle is 105, it's vertical angle is 105 which means it's linear angles, 180 minus 105 is 75. Now I can take those angles, slide them all the way up the orange until you get to the parallel line. Don't stop in the middle, go all the way to the parallel line and you can match them up. Okay, so we've just filled in 16 angles. Is it enough to help us find angle Y? Well, here's angle Y. It's part of a triangle. Do we have the other two angles of that triangle now? Yes, we do. So we can do 180 minus 55 minus 75. Let's see what we get. 180 minus 75 minus 55, and we get 50. So that 50 is your angle Y. All right, ladies and gentlemen, all right, today's video, a little bit longer, but your practice is gonna go pretty quick. So if we flip the page over, you will see you've got your practice problems. Now remember, you have to go to your Google form to input your answers in order to get full credit. Now there are eight examples today. So to get a 70%, all right, you're going to get need to get six of them correct. So take your time. Remember, if you don't get above a 70%, you can always redo the assignment until you get to that magical percentage. All right, folks, I hope you have a great rest of your day, a great weekend, and I look forward to meeting you all on our Google Meetup on Tuesday. All right, folks, have a great day. Bye-bye.